Hey guys, we are on day 97 in our Bible reading plan, and today we'll be reading the book of Ruth, chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that's the entire book. So here we go. Chapter 1 opens up with a statement that in the days of the judges, there were there was famine in the land. And then we're introduced to an Israelite family who chooses to go into Moab during the famine. And while they're there, the father dies, the sons marry Moabite women, then the sons die, and then the mother Naomi is left bereaved and just desires to go home to her people. So she tells her daughter-in-law she's going home and that they can return to their family. She releases them of their commitment to her, and one takes her up on it, and the other, Ruth, does not. She says, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. She's going where Ruth, where Naomi is going to go. And it's this beautiful picture of commitment and love that she shows uh, in her commitment to Naomi. So Ruth goes with Naomi back to Bethlehem. And while they're on their way, Naomi turns to her daughter-in-law and says, don't call me Naomi for I went away full, but I'm coming back. And she feels that she's coming back empty, that the Lord has for some reason, punished her. And so she says, call her Mara, which means bitter. So then chapter two opens up. We read that Ruth is going to go find food for them. And she finds a field to glean in, which is just following behind the workers and picking up the things that they have left behind in the field. And we find out that the owner of the field sees her, inquires as to who she is, is told she's the Moabite woman who's come with Naomi And this man, Boaz, then speaks with Ruth. He gives her his blessing for what she has done for Naomi, for her commitment. He gives her his blessing and then he tells his men to not just leave her alone, but to take care of her, to watch over her while she's in the field, make sure no harm comes to her and leave extra for her. So this continues on and then Ruth tells Naomi what has happened. Naomi praises God for this. She just says that Boaz is a close relative of theirs. And so you have the sense that God is watching over them as this uh, account unfolds. And then we get into chapter three and Naomi tells Ruth that she needs to get her a household to go to. And the way they're going to do that is she tells Ruth to go to Boaz. They have this detailed plan (laughs) (laughs) on how Ruth is going to make her intentions known to Boaz that the household she would like to be part of is his and that she would like to marry him. Naomi tells her how to do it. Uh, Ruth goes to the threshing floor, presents herself to Boaz, makes her intentions very clear. He gets it and would love to marry this woman. However, Boaz proves himself righteous and says that he is not as close as another relative who could be their kinsman redeemer. So Boaz says the matter will be settled the following day, and indeed it is. In chapter 4, Boaz goes to the city gate where this closer relative is, and he presents the case to this man. He says, will you redeem the land of Naomi's husband? And the man decides that he will not because he knows that if he does, he also marries Ruth. And that means that if they have a child, that child then will become the son of Naomi. Uh, He will redeem the land and the family line so that that inheritance and that family line doesn't disappear from Israel. And that's something that we read about uh, as we were reading through the commandments and the law that Moses gave the people before they ever entered the land. So we have this sense that Boaz is a righteous man and he wants to do what's right. And this kinsman redeemer will have nothing to do with it. So he releases his rights to Boaz. Boaz goes and marries Ruth. They have a son. Obed, and they lay him on Naomi's knees. And it's this beautiful picture of redemption for Naomi, that the Lord has been working all things together behind the scenes for her and for her family line. And it's also a beautiful picture of just the contrast of of Boaz and Ruth and their righteousness and their willingness to be righteous in a time where it was the days of the judges. We've just read how the judges slowly become more and more corrupt. We've just read how the people of Israel are more and more corrupt. Here we have these two people who are willing to follow the Lord, who are willing to commit their lives to Him, follow Him wholeheartedly, obey His commands. And God is going to use these two people to really bless Israel and the entire world because they become the two people in the line of King David, ultimately, and ultimately Jesus. And so while this book doesn't overtly mention 
the Lord or God or how He's working. We see that even in our hardship and even when we don't see what God is doing, even when it seems like all is lost, that God is still working all things together for the good of those who love Him. I hope that encourages you. I know it encouraged me. Have a great day, guys.